Welcome to Real Relationship Goals, a podcast all about the realities of healthy relationships. Real Relationship Goals is a project of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual violence or harassment and is seeking support, services, or needs more information, links to resources and our hotline number can be found in the description. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of their organizations or affiliates. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Real Asian Ship Goals, episode four. My name is Kyla. I'm Ariana. I'm Maria. And we're going to go ahead and jump right in to our story today. That's me. Um, so my story um, is everyone has a dis. Well, almost everyone has a Disney Plus and Netflix. A lot of people. Oh, most <laughs> most people. Um, but when you know COVID happened and people were like really getting into it, I would have a lot of family that was like, "Hey, do you have a Netflix? <laughs> Can I borrow your password?" And so I was giving up my password to like friends and family, and I didn't realize the error of my ways until. I would forget my password and had to reset it. Oh. Or with like Netflix, I would have to um like upgrade my plan so I could view on more screens than one. Because mm-hmm. I'd be trying to watch like a Lucifer on Netflix and then it'd be like too many streaming at once. And yes. I was like, ah. mm-hmm. So I just don't really share my password for those anymore. Unless it's like mm-hmm. someone I'm like, yeah, they're barely home. It's fine. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I say as somebody who is on mostly all of my family's shared streaming <laughs> services still, I have maybe one, two, or three that are my own, but other than that, I'm just like, mom, <laughs> dad, can I have the password, password please? <laughs> yeah. But no, I think that's definitely, especially with streaming services, a very normalized behavior. Also, just because They keep getting more expensive Mm -hmm. and who can afford to pay 11 plus dollars for 20 different streaming platforms. But that's a soapbox for another episode. (laughs) Netflix, if you're hearing this, I don't share my password. (laughs) Never. Never. I have my own personal account. Mm -hmm. Um, But as you guys can probably tell uh, from the theme of the story, we are talking about passwords today, um, just in case. Your unfamiliar passwords are defined by Merriam-Webster's dictionary as something that enables one to pass or to gain admission, uh, commonly used for cell phones, social media accounts, computers, tablets, streaming services, bank accounts, emails, and just about everything else in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, passwords are (laughs) all around us, but we definitely just want to talk about what do passwords have to do with healthy relationships? What does it look like to engage in safe practices whenever it comes to our passwords? Mm-hmm. So what are y'all thinking? Passwords are basically just essentially used to protect your personal information, your sensitive information, especially like with relationships, like for romantic partners, like say if you're married, mm-hmm. like you can have a joint a bank account, but you both have to know the password yeah. to that bank account and all those different things um and it's just really really you have to be really cautious with sharing things like that even if they are like real close to you whether it's your friend your partner or any other relatives it's mm-hmm. um you just gotta be really really careful with that <laughs> i'll be honest i love and trust a lot of my friends like with my life mm-hmm. period I don't think I would ever be inclined to share my bank account password, though. That's just not really, I don't know. You sure? You just don't want to share? I'm honest. Well, there's not much in there, so (laughs) it's it's not of much interest, I promise. But um, I definitely remember, though, whenever I was younger, uh, my best friend and I, that I'm I'm talking third grade, third or fourth grade, um, we shared our webkins passwords with each other so that whenever one of us would go on vacation and wouldn't have access to our computers the others could log on and play with and feed our pets so they wouldn't get sad and lonely Mm. and um i don't know why but that is stuck so hard in my brain i think about it 
relatively frequently. And I remember my parents being like, it's okay with this, but this isn't something that we like normally do. Like it's nor like, this is okay, but that's not something you want to do all the time Mm -hmm. just because, and even with little things, it's like, okay, that person is somebody that you trust and has proven that there's somebody you can trust, but you don't want to share that with just anybody. Mm -hmm. Because what if somebody was really mean or had bad intentions or wasn't really trying to be a good friend and logged on and like sold stuff from your little house or treated your animals badly or spent all your money that you earned and things like that Mm -hmm. so I just I don't know why but that is ingrained so deeply in my brain (laughs) yeah I think I've I've shared my password for like snapchat when I'm you know on vacation and don't Mm -hmm. have internet my friend will keep my streaks for yes. me shout out to you okay um but I like like you said bank account like I think it's also important to know that if you share your password maybe create a different password and and because some people mm-hmm. tend to use the same password mm-hmm. and so like if you use the same password for your social media mm-hmm. and everything else and somebody like happens to like try and get into your bank account you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I think for sure like be smart for like 100% with who you share it with and be smart with what you set your passwords to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think just kind of shifting the conversation a little bit. Uh, We've hit password safety. Can't say it enough. Be smart, be safe, um, take care of yourself, take care of the people around you. Um, What do y'all think about kind of that intersection of passwords and relationships? Like who do you trust? Who do you not trust? Do you have to trust? Complex. <laughs> I mean, my partner has, you know, my passwords for everything. And I, I trust her to like not just randomly go into my phone and be like, who you texting? Yeah. Which I mean, I text her and my parents. Mainly. <laughs> so, I mean, there's not much to it there. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I like. I have seen relationships where it's like, give me your password. Mm-hmm. And Demanding. I think that's, yeah, like a, <clears throat> that's like a no, no, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just was talking with you guys earlier about how, like with our groups and students, how they mm-hmm. explain a lot of the times how they see sharing passwords, like with their friends or with their partners as a sign of trust. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, in order for me to trust you, you should give me your password um, just so I can see everything and make sure thing everything is okay. And just like, for some point, it's like a security or validation moment for that person that's asking for the password. But on the flip side of that, the con of that, it could be seen as controlling mm-hmm. or manipulation or like I said before, like demanding, like you need to give me your password right now, mm-hmm. which is never healthy mm-hmm. in any type of relationship. So that's how I kind of view it. Um, me personally, I don't share my passwords about with anything mm-hmm. just for the simple fact that I had an incident mm-hmm. where I let a friend log on into one of my social media accounts and that was fine. But Snapchat had a whole entire thing where people were getting their accounts hacked into and you would think that it's that person. Oh, and the person would ask for your stuff. And like, you know how you get a verification code? Yeah. yeah. So that happened. And I got hacked out of my own account. And they were going around asking others for money. Oh, no. That's and so I'm like, horrible. that's not me. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't that's, need your money. <laughs> that's, that's not me. And so instant, instant, uh, incidents like that, um, like, I don't share passwords with yeah. friends, family nothing that's super fair yeah that's so horrible I'm so sorry (laughs) that's awful yeah yeah I definitely think oh yes I have heard also from lots of students the oh like if they won't give me their password like that means they have something to hide I don't trust them I can't trust them if they don't give me their passwords like I need to be able to like and that need to be like basically looking over their shoulder Mm -hmm. and I just remember always thinking you're saying that you need this so you can trust them, but we're clearly operating from a space in which you don't currently trust them. Why do you want to be with someone that you actively distrust so strongly? Mm-hmm. 
Um, so that just always was a little bit of a disconnect for me. Cause I'm like, if you can't trust them, that's not a healthy relationship. You need to be with someone that you can trust kind of implicitly. Like I told y'all earlier, like Everett, my partner knows the password to my phone, but I don't know the password to his, but I've also never really asked because I wanted to look something up the other day. My phone was in another room. He was right there and I said, hey, can I borrow your phone? And no hesitation, he just pulled it out, unlocked it and handed it to me. So I was able to Google what what I wanted to look up. So it's like that, I don't need that password. Like, Cause also I don't, I don't wanna go through his text messages or check through, rifle through any of that stuff because A, it's not my business. Mm -hmm. And B, I don't feel that need to be like I said earlier, kind of like looking over his shoulder, double checking. I just don't have that, that distrust. Mm -hmm. I think some of that distrust comes from previous relationships where there was, and that's, you know, completely understandable. Yeah. Valid, understandable, but for sure. I think kind of like how you always said, uh, I don't think there is a need to know and like invade someone's privacy that way. Like it hides all of your stuff. You, you don't need everybody knowing your business all the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah you just really got to take an account of it's kind of invading someone's privacy matters mm -hmm. and also no one is entitled to give you their information their passwords mm -hmm. like you can have a loving caring relationship with that person and don't need their passwords mm -hmm. to anything um and that is a sign of trust like I trust you enough I don't need anything I don't need to have all your passwords to all your accounts and everything like that um so yeah for sure that's, that's a big disconnect right there I was like I don't know I can't figure it out yeah. I was like mm. well and I definitely appreciate like that no one you're not entitled to mm -hmm. anyone's password no one is entitled to your password um and kind of tying that into what you were just saying Maria the it's definitely understandable if you have had a previous relationship that has caused harm, that has broken your trust, definitely understand that. I'm so sorry that that happened. But as we've kind of talked about in the past, like your personal experiences, your personal traumas, things like that don't excuse mm -hmm. future abusive behaviors from you. So it's one of those things where it's like you need to fully process kind of that hurt and that trauma and what that looks like before you begin projecting that onto your next relationship and just kind of processing that because it's not the other person's responsibility to kind of carry that weight for sure if mm -hmm. that makes sense no yeah in an instance I feel like it's kind of connects to like foreboding joy mm. like trying to and monitor back <laughs> yes to a previous season yeah. um like foreboding joy um like trying to monitor something before it happens so like oh I already knew this was going to happen because I have the passwords oh, and everything oh, you're so right and it's like no there is no you know right way um to prevent something from happening um if anything goes wrong with that relationship um you just really have to sit there and process with that yeah. that like it could possibly happen but that doesn't mean it will happen mm -hmm. so you just have to really trust yourself and mm -hmm. trust whoever you have relationships with yeah. so that's really good I agree I think a kind of a natural transition here is kind of thinking now about like our parents our adult influencers who are listening in right now hello to you out there um how do we kind of like shift this into considering like children's passwords mm -hmm. and um, like monitoring their behaviors and stuff and kind of utilizing that I guess privilege of mm -hmm. having their passwords like it's a big overwhelming topic but kind of what are y'all's thoughts there I mean <clears throat> coming from some experience with our kiddo like we have her passwords to pretty much everything. She doesn't even know her own Roblox password. <laughs> um, we have to figure it out every time because we don't remember it. Um, I think I mean, it was similar with my Webkins password, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, I don't, and of course she's young. She's not like in her teens where she's like big into whatever social media, like TikTok or whatever's going on. But I mean, we don't make her 
share anything with us that she doesn't want to and at the same time like if she sees something on any kind of platform or whatever or she's like feeling icky about something like she'll come and tell us yeah. so I think maintaining an open line of like yeah. trust and communication mm -hmm. is super important when you're dealing with children and their privacy because they are still entitled to their own sense of privacy and, and mm -hmm. what they do and just making sure they know making sure they know like the rules for like safe online practices mm -hmm. I think that's smart I like especially just kind of like what you were saying, like creating that space or that environment where mm -hmm. they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's something, it's a hard needle to thread. Mm -hmm. Parents, adult influencers, so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. My heart goes out to you. It's hard. There are no right answers. There's, there's no perfect way to engage in students' lives for sure. Um, but I definitely think that's such a big thing is creating that environment where oh you're not feeling comfortable but I'm a safe space I'm not just like a a punishment vending machine mm -hmm. I guess where mm -hmm. you're doing something that I know is unsafe and because that scares me because I love you and I want to protect you I'm going to punish you mm -hmm. it's like no like we need to understand what's going on here I need to uh, I'm saying as a non-parent <laughs> um so once again, don't have all the answers, but this is just my thoughts, like creating that space of like, I want to treat you as a full person. Mm -hmm. And here is my reasoning why. Like a lot of times I think some parents will utilize the because I, because I said so, mm -hmm. which I, I, I was a receiver of a because I said so um, several times um, and I totally get it. But at the same time, I think that it can be good when we can mm -hmm. to give explanations to students mm -hmm. and to I would, I would say our children but to, to other people's children <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I think shying away from because I said so is really important for them to cultivate their own health relationships too mm -hmm. just kind of like on a little side note oh well, that's fair because they don't they learn that like you can't just tell someone like do it because I said so they learn like mm -hmm. to explain and give the reasoning why and have the other person see their perspective Especially when they get into the like the teenage phase, uh, yes, they're definitely gonna be like, oh well, why? And yeah. I'm not understanding. So mm -hmm. you definitely want to. This feels unfair. Shy yeah, yes. this feels unfair. Yeah. It's like you definitely want to shy away from. Oh, because I told you to, and oh, because yeah. I'm your parent. Is mm -hmm. like, it, it it won't hurt to explain why or to help them understand why this is happening or why you said that. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, just having that just transparency moment, that open communication with mm -hmm. one another. It's like, it doesn't have to be a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I said this because of this and you might not understand it now, but, but you'll mm -hmm. understand it later on in life. Kind of like that situation. I think that's super fair. And it also, I think, opens the door to create a deeper intimacy and a deeper relationship with mm -hmm. students as well, because like I mentioned earlier, I think a lot of this response is out of love and a desire mm -hmm. to protect, which also means whenever kids are being unsafe online, you like, that's scary. Mm -hmm. So I think that elicits a lot of emotions from like mm -hmm. parents and adult influencers. And I think those need to be shared mm -hmm. in those conversations. And like, I think that as adults, we should be naming our emotions and our feelings more frequently with students to normalize it mm -hmm. because like I'm thinking about like even my own parents like if and I actually now that I'm thinking about my parents were pretty forthcoming about that in a lot of ways like they would tell me and like hey like if you're doing this thing like that scares me because I don't think it's safe you can get hurt mm -hmm. and they would name that and that was always so impactful so it was like oh like I am hurting you by doing this and that always would make me break down in tears <laughs> as soon as soon as I I could I, anytime I was in trouble I could never talk to my dad because it would just be he would cry I would cry <laughs> scariest was whenever the waterworks just comes yeah <laughs> yeah my dad my dad's a big crier it was always way scarier whenever my mom would cry though mm -hmm. because my mom never cries so mm -hmm. I would be like oh big weight big weight yeah <laughs> this is a big deal but I think that being able to name those emotions is really good modeling mm -hmm. that's definitely a big thing any other thoughts no all right 
seems like a good transition into our relationship goal for today which I have. And our relationship goal for this episode is making sure you're creating passwords across all your accounts, strong passwords, unique passwords. Um, If you have one shared password with someone you know or simply forgot it, um, that's okay. Just make sure that you change it as often as you can. Um, It is in your best interest to change your passcode than to lose access to all your personal and sensitive Mm -hmm. information. And also another part of this is like establishing boundaries with people you have relationships with when it comes to sharing passwords. It's like, don't be afraid to let someone know that you're not comfortable with sharing passwords. And if you have that trusting and caring relationship, they will understand as well. So that is our relationship goal. Awesome. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then I think Maria has our recommendation for today. I surely do. My recommendation is Harry Potter. Um, I love Harry Potter as we're getting into the colder months and yes. everyone starts putting Harry Potter on the TV. It's true. On like TV, if anyone watches cable anymore. <laughs> that is. Um, After we talked about streaming services for yeah. half of the episode. <laughs> right. Um, but I, it's always like really like a comfort thing to get like snacks and some hot chocolate and just watch Harry Potter, which is, uh, if you haven't heard of him, um, he's a wee little boy, a <laughs> wizard boy. Um, who has to face oh, like <laughs> we lad who has to face something that's trying to kill him and or his friends in every movie yeah. or book, um, and eventually like face off against the ultimate evil, big bad, mm-hmm. big bad wolf with no nose. So, <laughs> yeah, awesome. I always I second that recommendation. I love Harry Potter in the fall. It just feels appropriate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank y'all awesome. so much. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in for today's episode. Um, If you're looking for more prevention and education content, please absolutely check us out on Instagram at ACCVC underscore prevention, or you can check out the Advocacy Center's social media accounts. We're on Instagram and Facebook at advocacy underscore Waco. And go ahead and be sure to like and subscribe our YouTube channel so you can stay caught up with our new episodes each week. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Adios. Thanks so much for tuning in to Real Relationship Goals. This episode was produced by the Prevention and Education Department of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. You can follow us on Instagram at accvc underscore prevention. See you next time.